Hello, and welcome to this week's program of the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. My name is Farheen, and I'm so thankful that you are here with us today. Each week, we connect with and hear from speakers who usually have a message focused on our love for innovation, entrepreneurship, and education. Today, we have a presentation from Allison Bakewell, the Director of Operations for Cake for Kids. Cake for Kids provides free birthday cakes to at-risk youth and foster children ages 1 to 24. Allison joined the organization as a baker in 2013 and was eager for the opportunity to become involved in the operations, ensuring that as many children as, pos as, many children as possible felt special on their birthday. With that said, Allison, please take it away. Hi, thanks everyone for having me. I really appreciate being able to uh, share a little bit about Cake for Kids with you. So I'm gonna jump right in and uh, get started. Okay, so everyone can see the presentation? Good. Okay, so Cake for Kids, um, we have a very simple mission. Um, we deliver smiles to foster children and at-risk youth by baking and delivering birthday cakes for them. Um, what we're trying to do is raise their self-esteem and let them know that someone cares about them and is thinking about them with a seemingly simple gift of birthday cake on their special day. Um, so a lot of the kids that we um, serve are, um, they just don't have the great start in life. They don't have the same opportunities as other kids. And a lot of them, their birthdays, they just don't get to celebrate them. Their families may not have enough money to do that. They may not be with their family. Um, so their day can pass by and no one could even notice that it's their birthday. So for us, we want to make sure that they know they're special and that uh, somebody cares enough to um, do something for them on their birthday. So we were founded in 2010 by Libby Grunder. Libby read a story in the newspaper about a young foster girl in the Midwest who had just been placed in a new foster home. She came home on her birthday and the new foster mom had a birthday cake for the young lady. Um, and met her at the door and the little girl saw the cake and burst into tears and ran to her room. And the foster mom was just distraught. She thought, oh my God, maybe she doesn't like chocolate. You know, she doesn't like the, the way the cake looks. She went in to talk to the little girl and asked, you know, is it chocolate? You don't like chocolate? Can I do something else? And the little girl said, I, I'm not crying because I'm sad. I've just never had a birthday cake before. So Libby thought if that was happening in the Midwest, it was probably happening in her, um, her neighborhood as well. And she wanted to do something about that. So she rounded up a group of friends and they started with a foster family agency in Los Altos, Help One Child. And they started delivering cakes in September of 2010. So we deliver um, free custom birthday cakes for children I mean, these kids could be in foster care or kinship. Um, they could be homeless, low-income families who are getting safety net services from community service groups. Um, they could be victims of domestic violence or human trafficking and in a shelter, or refugees, um, any kind of, you know, transition age youth who are in transitional housing between having gone from foster to living on their own. Uh, there's lots of different um, at-risk youth um, in all over the world and where we're focusing on in the United States. Um, so we serve youth ages 1 to 24. Um, we do that because the California foster system um, used to just support youth ages 1 to 18 and when you turned 18 whether you were out of high school or not you got kicked out of the foster home that was it. Um, unless the foster family agreed to keep you even though they wouldn't continue to get any kind of support from the state. Um, the state finally realized that at 18, um, these youth probably weren't ready to take care of themselves. I mean, not having had the best start in life and not having had a consistent, um, stable home, being moved from foster home to foster home, they didn't have the independent living skills that, you know, kids who live in a stable family home have. And so they extended the foster age to 24. So we follow the California state guidelines for foster youth. So we don't just do birthdays. Uh, we do graduations, adoptions, and special events. Um, we decided that um, if 
these youth weren't getting recognized for their birthdays. They probably weren't getting recognized for important milestones like graduating. Um, and so we wanted to help out with that. And then because we were doing foster youth, a big uh, milestone for a foster youth is getting adopted or reunified with their family. So we kind of count reunifications as adoptions. And then we support special events for our partners. Um, so that could be a, um, a fundraiser or um, a Halloween party for the kids or a volunteer appreciation. Um, so we support all those as well. And those are super fun for our bakers because they get to do cupcakes or cookies, bars, brownies, you know, that are hol holiday themed or um, like one, one of our um, partners has a community um, get together every summer and it's to raise awareness in the community and to thank their volunteers. And it's a carnival theme and they have a cakewalk. So we provide all the cakes for the cakewalk. So that's kind of fun for the bakers. So when we started in 2010, our first uh, year, we delivered 13 cakes. And um, last year we delivered over 5,000 cakes. And in March this year, we delivered our 20,000th cake just before we had to shut down for the pandemic. So we paused deliveries on March 17th and we didn't start them again until June 1st. Um, but we're back up and running now with about 60% of our partners able to accept cakes right now. So a little bit about um, the population that we serve. Um, so there are over 400,000 kids in foster care in the US. Um, and the statistic that is just startling to me is that one child enters the foster system every two minutes. So while we've been on this call, if you know it's been like five minutes, 10 kids have entered foster care. And less than 50% of those kids graduate from high school. Um, so again, that goes towards the, you know, the living skills and being able to support themselves if they don't have a high school education. Uh, a lot of these kids end up homeless on the streets, um, in the juvenile system. They just, they really have a lot of struggles facing that they face. Um, so we also serve the homeless community um, and one child in every 30 in the US is homeless, which again, to me is just staggering. Um, and 23% of all homeless in the US are under age 18. Now that doesn't mean that they're on their own. That could be, you know, youth that are with their families and the family is homeless. Um, but there's over a thousand unaccompanied minors and 10,000 transition age youth, which are youth ages 18 to 24 that are living rough. And that means that they are living in places not meant for human habitation, like their car, under a bridge, in a tent. They're, uh, you, know, in, you know, out in the wilderness somewhere. So um, it's a significant problem, especially for those transition age youth. Um, like I said, those kids that, you know, once they, they're done in foster care, um, in the actual foster home setting, uh, they're pretty unprepared to take care of themselves and they do end up being homeless quite a bit. Um, human trafficking is um, a pretty large crime industry across the, the world. Um, and in the US, over 17,000 people are trafficked each year. And you know, when I think of human trafficking, I think, well, maybe they're bringing them in from another country, but that's not true. Most of those 17,000 people are U.S. born. So it's a significant problem for people right here in the U.S., not just, you know, third world countries or that kind of thing. And more importantly, 60% of trafficked vic victims are foster youth. So again, the traffickers are targeting foster youth because they don't have the support system that other kids do and are easily um, brought into that, that lifestyle. So Cake for Kids, how it works, we partner with human and social services agencies um, and the, the caseworkers that work with the youth, um, they get the birthday wish from the youth and then they fill out a form with the cake request. We validate all that information and we put it out on a baker portal. 
Um, our bakers look at the portal and right now, um, because only 60% of our, of our um, partners are able to accept cakes, it's a big rush to get a cake. So every time they, one goes on the portal, it gets snapped up within 24 hours. So the baker signs up to deliver the cake. Um, about a week beforehand, we ask them to confirm that they're still on for baking just to make sure they, one, they remember. Um, because I actually forgot one time until the night before and that was a mad dash. Um, and then also just to make sure that their schedule hasn't changed and we confirm all the details of the cake with them. Then they bake the cake in their own home. They deliver it to the caseworker and the caseworker delivers it to the youth. And we do it that way instead of delivering to the youth or to the family for the privacy and safety of the youth. And some of these kids, especially in human, in the human trafficking shelters or the domestic violence shelters, they really do need their privacy for their safety. And so we extend that to all our partners and we don't deliver to any of the youth. And our bakers know that they're never gonna meet the youth. So this really is a very selfless volunteer activity. They bake in their own home, they put the cake in a box, they take the box to the office, they drop it off with a receptionist or a cake or case worker. And they never get to see what the youth thinks of the cake unless the agency provides feedback, which we do ask for, but we only get it on about 30% of the cakes. So I talked about we celebrate birthdays, graduations, adoptions, and events. And here's some um, examples of cakes. Uh, so the birthday, the youth gets to pick the flavor, the, um, whether they want a cake, cupcakes, cookies, bars, or brownies, and then a theme. And so in this case, uh, for Marita, she actually asked for fresh flowers and fruit on her cake. So that's what the baker came up with. And then graduations, they typically don't give us a whole lot of, um, of direction on those themes. So the bakers get to come up with the, what they think, you know, what they like for a, a graduation theme. And, Typically it involves a mortar board, um, but there's lots of different ways that the bakers come up with to celebrate those graduations. Um, and then I thought this adoption kit, this, I chose this one specifically to show how clever our bakers are. Um, four, four siblings got adopted by a family. And so it was the missing pieces of their family. So those were puzzle pieces. I thought that was really cute. And then the last one is an event. It was actually an end of summer barbecue. And one of our bakers made these cookies that I just, they are absolutely adorable. I certainly couldn't do that. And I was just so amazed at all the detail, especially in the hamburgers and the hot dogs. Um, so usually we get, like I said, a theme and a flavor. Um, but not always, sometimes it's just baker's choice. And so I thought it'd be fun for you guys to see um, what our bakers come up with when it's baker's choice. Um, and they get the age of the youth, but they do not get um, any other information besides you know, what the, the youth asked for. Um, so, you know, for an age four child, they made a really cute um, rainbow cake with um, Skittles on it, which is great because then they got a little bit of extra sugar on top, uh, some candy that they could eat. Um, but then for the middle cake up top here, um, age 20, the baker went a little more sophisticated and, and made um, some sugar wafer flowers um, and really pretty colored frosting and then lots of really fun sprinkles on it. Uh, the emoji cake, that was for a group birthday. Um, so there were lots of different emojis on there and um, some, some candy suckers for them. Um, sometimes people are like, it is really hard to decorate brownies. So um, one of our bakers came up with making little sugar wafer uh, flowers and then got happy birthday Selena, the whole name on the individual pieces by cutting out fondant um, letters. Uh, and then down at the bottom, you can see they did cupcakes and they did a bunch of different um, piping techniques to make the cupcakes look a little different. And there's a little happy birthday um, banner in the back there. 
So we always ask that the youth's name is on it um, and the celebratory message, whether that's a congratulations or a happy birthday, um, just to make sure that the youth knows it was made especially for them. So sometimes we do get um, requests where they say, please don't put the name on it. And that's for the privacy of the youth. And we honor that. Um, and sometimes, most of the time, the baker gets to put the name on the cake and you know decorate it specifically to a theme that the, the youth requests. So um, I wanted to let you know a little bit about what people say about um, the cakes when they get it. This is some feedback that we received. Um, so the caseworker wrote, Samantha is new to my program and didn't believe that she was actually going to get cupcakes that she requested. She told me that people make promises all the time and never keep the words that they speak. When I took the cupcakes to her residence, she had a smile on her face and told me that she was overwhelmed because she had never had someone care enough to make cupcakes just for her on her birthday and that and just the way she wanted them. So that I mean that is we hear that over and over again that these kids feel like people let them down all the time and then when a caseworker says I'm going to bring you cupcakes and brings the cupcakes not only does that make the youth feel better but it also um, really solidifies a bond between the caseworker and the youth and helps with the caseworker being able to help them on other things because they're building trust. So it's a two, it's, there's a benefit for the youth as well as for the caseworker being able to um, build that trust with the youth. Uh, the, the next one, um, the youth asked for cupcake or for cookies. Um, so I wanted to send you all a huge thank you for the wonderful cakes, cupcakes and cookies that you provide my advocate youth. So this one youth has um, been in our program for a couple of years. So this year um, marks the third year and that we've provided treats for this particular um, youth. Uh, the, the person is a CASA in the Bay Area. So my youth turned 17 and was among, and among the many diagnoses that she's been given, Mary is nonverbal other than some sounds and very little in actual words. To to my amazement, she verbalized good after eating two of the cookies and signed to thank me as well. She smiled for the first time in three years I've been her advocate. She not only spoke a word to me, she also blew me a kiss. So we really do make a huge impact for these kids. And um, that's really why we're doing it, is to make sure that these kids know that they, they're special and that people are, are thinking about them in care. So um, people are always asking us, you know, I'm not a baker, what else can I do to help out? Um, so uh, we, we need help with fundraising. Um, we rely solely on private funding and donations. We are not the type of organization that gets grants. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the foundations say, oh, birthday cake, that's so cute, you know, but why aren't their families doing it? Or, you know, we'd rather give money to organizations that are providing essential services, you know, safety net, food, clothing, you know, rent assistance, that kind of thing. Um, we're a very lean organization. There's five staff members. Um, we have over 3000 bakers. Our bakers donate all the, the goods to bake and deliver the cake. Um, but, and about 82% of our expenses actually fund the programs to deliver the cakes. And so that's like software and salaries and that kind of thing. Um, so people always ask, how can we help out? And that's if you shop with Amazon Smile, you can choose Cake for Kids and we get a percentage of your shopping. Um, and this year, it's it's actually been a really good, good source of income for us with all the online shopping everyone's doing. People host bake sales for us. They hold fun Facebook fundraisers. Um, the other way you can help is to spread the word. You can enjoy, encourage a friend. If you know have a friend that loves to bake, you can enjoy, encourage them to join Cake for Kids. Um, we have events this year. Um, our big fundraiser we did online. Um, so we were able to reach um, so many more people that way, which is great. We are not only in California, we're in Virginia, DC, Chicago, Illinois, we're in central Kentucky. We're getting ready to open up next week in Hartford, Connecticut. 
um, Kansas City metro area early next year, Boise, Idaho early next year. We're in um, Washington or Jefferson County in Washington, which is right on the Puget Sound, it's a tiny little community. So we're expanding all the time um, and we're always looking for bakers. So we'd love if you know someone and have them go to our website, see if we're in their area. You can always attend um, one of our events um, you can follow us on social media and share our posts, get the word out about us. We'd love that. Um, if you want to volunteer in other ways, um, you can help us plan events or baker meetups or fundraisers. You can help with social media or if you've got a special skill or hobby, especially if you're a Salesforce developer, um, we'd really love that. Um, but we'd love to hear from you. If you've got some skill that you think we can use, we'd love to hear about it. Um, so th the next story, this really, um, this story really hits home why we volunteer. Um, so I always choke up when I read this, so apologize. But um, first, I want to say this was the most beautiful gesture I've ever experienced. I, like many Bay Area parents, have worked my way up from living in a shelter with three children to now working three jobs to afford my very high rent which leaves nothing for extras besides basic necessities. My son was very aware that times were tough and his birthday would not be much, but we would be together and that was most important. This program literally changed the entire feel of his birthday. Instead of disappointment masked with a smile like every other year, he was little, literally blown away in his words, and in his own words, had never seen such a beautiful cake. He has loved Frank Sinatra since his old Italian grandfather showed him a record at the age of three. That is his hero. He hopes to sing like Frank and be an icon like Frank. I never expected anything like this. I cried when I opened the box to see that cake. From the sounds of the email, my request sounded too lavish and complicated when asked who his hero was. So I was expecting a plain cake and that was gonna be fine because the important part was having a cake so he could blow out his candles. He told me later his wish was that whoever made this cake get a million dollars because they are so nice. I thought I would share with you that you made my 12 year old who was a little different feel like he was king of the world. So um, Angelo has been in our program um, several years. Um, this was his first uh, Frank Sinatra cake. And um, the next year he asked for Frank Sinatra again, he got another fantastic Frank Sinatra cake. But this baker happened to actually draw that Frank Sinatra freehand on the cake, she airbrushed it on the cake. Um, she's, she's quite an artist. So, I mean, we really do touch the lives of these kids in so many different ways. We hear over and over again from kids that, you know, they're 19, 20 years old, and this is the first birthday cake they've ever had. Um, so I wanted to leave you with some smiles from the kids that we've gotten um, pictures on and sharing their cakes. Um, we hear that not only is it exciting for them to get the cake, but to be able to share the cake with others because most of them don't have much that they can share. So with that, I'd love to answer any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Allison. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, but before we go to question and answer, I just wanted to quickly introduce the folks on the call. So if you um, hear your name, please wave. So first we have Tanya Martin, who is in Atlanta, Georgia. We have Rory Olson, who is in Houston, Texas. Um, Shags Shagrin, who is in Walnut Creek. Rushton Hurley in San Jose, California. Um, Suzanne Van Stralen in Napa. Right, you're in Napa, right? Yes. Um, Sandy Stabile, who's in Fremont. And finally, Cal Mann in Oakland. Um, so the first question will go to Rustin. What a beautiful story, Allison. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm wondering if, if working with the team on, on this project, I mean, it, it's, it's, a great, it's a great story. So I, I know it, it, it hits a lot of people in the heart and they want to help. Are there particular organizations that have been especially successful for helping you out in any way at all? Or, or do you have kind of a story of, of kind of a cool connection that happened at one point that can kind of jog people's creative sense of how to help you out? Um, 
So we get we get groups that try that want to work with us quite often, um, and there's a couple ways to do it. Um, people, like I said, hold bake sales. That's probably not going to work for you guys. Um, they get together and bake when we have events. When we have large events, then they can get together and 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 someone bakes, and then we worked with um, with uh, Cisco, where one of the bakers works for Cisco, and she got um, all the people on her team into a conference room at lunch and provided all the stuff to decorate. And they did, they all got together and decorated and had a really lovely team building event plus decorated 200 cupcakes. Um, so there's things like that. Um, we have had people make um, birthday cards that then we give out to the um, the partners, our partners, and then they give those to the family so the family can have a birthday card to give to the youth as well as the, so they're like generic birthday cards, right? They're, they're not signed or anything, but it's something that then the families can, can give the youth. Um, and then um, we're just starting to talk to a um, organization called uh, Together We Rise and they support foster youth. And they do something called birthday boxes. And so we're wondering if there's a way that we can partner with them um, when we get groups who wanna help out and the groups would make the birthday boxes and we would on our side try and work with the, the, their partners who get the birthday boxes and give to the kids to get a cake to the kid to kind of to match the birthday box. Um, so that's a, that's something that people can do individually and, you know, it might be something that you want to take a look. It's not specifically cake for kids, um, but it's, you know, in that same vein, uh, vein of celebrating birthdays for at-risk youth that you can, um, they, they give you all the materials and you guys build the birthday boxes. And I mean, maybe you have a Zoom meeting where you distribute it all and everyone, you know, builds their own their birthday boxes while you guys all chat and stuff. Um, we did have uh, one super fun um, uh, organization. Veritas had their um, uh, executive leadership conference and uh, they got everyone together to, um, to donate and um, partnered with us we had a family come in for a young foster child um, and he wanted a, an Iron Man cake. So we did the Iron Man cake, one of our bakers did. And then they had one of their executives dress up as Iron Man and they got everyone together and donated and um, bought the youth a um, birthday present. So they presented the, the birthday present, the cake, an Iron Man to this kid at their conference. And then they also um, put money in a scholarship for the, for the young man. So that was kind of nice. That was a nice way to partner um, in that case that, you know, this, yeah, I think he was five. So he got this fantastic Iron Man cake and the, the baker actually put this light up thing on it uh, so the, the cake glowed and Iron Man was there to say, you know, to say hi to him. And he got, I, I think they bought him a bike. Um, so that was kind of a nice way um, that groups partner with us. So it's, I think it's a little bit harder when you're all remote from each other, but hopefully I've given you a couple of ideas. Great. Thank you so much, Allison. Um, our next question is from Cal. Hi there, thanks very much for the presentation, Allison. Um, my last name would be Bake Not So Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, a couple of thoughts, you mentioned that uh, you're always looking for bakers. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of thoughts. One was, um, have you ever thought about having some of your good bakers who are also telegenic to have them maybe do some lessons and you could charge people to have them participate in the lessons and that would not only generate some revenue, but also um, maybe foster some new bakers. Yeah. Um, and then the other thought was, have you ever thought of doing a cookbook that tells your story and um, also shares a bunch of recipes and 
you yeah. know, have them have them be kind of, you know, how to decorate as well as how to bake. That's actually a great idea. No, we've never considered that. We have actually done some fundraisers. Um, in fact, one of our bakers, it, this is kind of a fun thing. I don't know if you guys have, have tried this. Um, Airbnb is kind of pivoted since people aren't really traveling and they're doing online experiences. So you could do meditation with a Buddhist monk or you can you know, cook with a famous chef or this, this lady, um, she wanted to do cake decorating, but that's kind of hard um, to, to do remotely. So she does a flip along and she, um, she teaches people how to take a base cake, pancake recipe and make pancakes and then, you know, how to change the pancake recipe to do savory ones for dinner or fruit ones for kids or chocolate chips or whatever. And it's like, a, I don't know, a 45 minute thing and you actually cook, you know, you all make the mix together and then you cook the pancakes together. And then she donates all those funds to Cake for Kids kids for each one that she does but it, um so we have done some cooking ones that are kind of fun um or baking and we have done at least one decorating class where people have gone and you know a portion of the fee for the decorating class goes to cake for kids but i love the cake book i or the cookbook idea that's great great um rustin would you like to ask another question I was just wondering, I mean, a lot of the cakes that you showed in your presentation were really sophisticated cakes, right? I mean, do you ever have people who'd be like, oh, you know, maybe maybe I won't make a cake because it won't be good enough for the child? I mean, is, is that an issue you guys face? I, actually, actually, it is. We hear it all the time. Oh, my God, I'm not that good. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not that good. Um, my first cake was just a disaster. Um, it looked fine. It looked like a nice homemade cake. I mean, and that's what we tell our partners is that at a minimum, it'll be a nice homemade cake. Um, and so we hear from people that they don't want to join. Um, but we do cookies, bars, and brownies, and we do cupcakes, and those are a lot easier. And we will reimburse our volunteers up to $100 a year for in-person decorating classes. So we want them to improve their skills, and, and we'll help them out with that. Great. Thank you so much, Allison. Um, so seeing as there are no more questions or comments, Rotary members and guests, please make sure you fill out the attendance section and leave us a comment. Also, if you have an awesome idea for a program, please use the link below to submit your ideas. Um, thank you again, Allison. And I just want to turn it back to you kind of for your final one minute wrap up. Okay. Um, so I'd love for you guys all to go to the Kick for Kids website or to Instagram or Facebook. So you can see examples of the cakes um, and you can just get an idea of the smiles that that kids are are receiving through Cake for Kids. And please, if you know someone um, that's a baker and you think they they'd like to join us, we'd love to have them. And um, thank you very much for spreading the world word about Cake for Kids. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Allison, and we will see the rest of you next week.